All right. Hello, Westmount. It has been a journey, isn't it? Ever since the pandemic struck, we've had some of our school spirit lost, unfortunately. But through this event, I mean, I think you could tell by yourselves, but we've managed to somehow rekindle that spirit, which was one of the goals of this tournament, and I'm proud that we've been able to accomplish that. Now, I want to say a quick few words to the seniors who have been, like, a lot of, who had helped out a lot in this tournament. Without all of you, we wouldn't have been able to achieve a fraction of what we've been able to in this tournament. And for that, I want to thank you a lot, everyone who has done their part. <laughs> and to the juniors, I know this is your first real high school experience. It has been a weird time, but I hope that through this tournament, I could give you a glimpse of what your high school experience could be if you put in the time and effort. I know, like, grade 10s, your first year virtual learning, not very fun. <laughs> and, however, high school can be a special time, so make sure to, use, like, to put in the effort. Make sure to make the time worth it. It's up to you. If you want to do something, like, if you have the passion for something, you will be able to do it. I hope, like, I never thought I would be able to do this, but then again, be sure to use this opportunity. Don't let it pass by, as the pandemic has taught us. I'll be passing the mic on to Matthew now. I, I just want to say a quick word on like thank you everyone, uh, all the participants. I want to say thank you to all the donate donors, uh, the students that donated, to the people watching at home that donated. Uh, thank you to Daniel and Mr. Brun, the commentators for this tournament, and uh, also want to say a special thank you to our, our main sponsor of the event, Solver. Uh, they've been amazing, and you know without them, this wouldn't be here. And I also want to say thank you to Cody. He's here from Toronto. The first time in two years we've had anyone else come in the school. And um, he's come down from Toronto and he's going to give us a little speech. Thanks, Matthew. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Cody Littman and I am High Lifeline's fundraising coordinator and the head of Gaming for Life. So I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank Matthew and Bashar uh, for creating this amazing tournament. Uh, and just thank you all so much for all of you for coming out today to watch the finals. Just it's such a great turnout and it, it's very, it makes me very happy to see. Uh, the the High Smash Cup is being run in support of High Lifeline Canada. Uh, we're a charity that supports 500 families who are impacted by life-threatening or chronic illness. Uh, as you know, illness impacts everyone in the family. It's not just the child or the parent who is ill. Uh, every day, High Lifeline Canada helps families who are going through very difficult times. We, we have many services that we provide for these families and these children. Uh, some of them include hot meals delivered to homes, visits and toys for children who are in the hospital, therapy to help family members deal with illness and loss, tutoring to help children keep up with their schoolwork, and in the summer, we also offer many camp programs, both day and overnight camps, uh, for children who are ill and for their siblings. These camps allow children to have new experiences, make new friends, and to enjoy being away from home in a supportive environment. The High Smash Cup was created by teens to help teens through the power of video games. All the money that has been raised by this tournament, which, by the way, we passed our fundraising goal, over $1,000, and with the help of Solber, is being doubled to 2000 for High Lifeline Canada, which... <laughs> thank, thank you all just so much for all, all of your support in that. All, all of this money that has been raised, it's gonna go to children and teens who are clients of High Lifeline Canada to help make their lives a little brighter. They will know that all of you, the Westmount Secondary School students and community, stand with them and care about them. So give yourself another round of applause. Yeah. 
So your support, whether it's through donations or spreading awareness, uh, it means the world to us. And to learn more about High Lifeline Canada and how you can help, including volunteering opportunities, uh, after the match is over, you can come up to speak to me. I'll, I'll have some information pamphlets and things like that. Or you can visit our website. It's highlifelinecanada.org. So I just want to say thank you again to, to Matthew and Bashar and all of you for just having me here today and supporting High Lifeline Canada with this incredible event. So good luck to the competitors and enjoy the final matches. And uh, follow us on Twitch, Gaming for Life. Uh, that's where the tournament is streaming, and we have more things that support High Lifeline Canada in the works through there. So, thank you again. Good luck to everyone. Now we're going to pass the mic on to Daniel, who is uh, Daniel and Mr. Brun, who are going to introduce the players and the match. Hello there. Essay. I don't think this is the proper avenue, Daniel. Well, um, you know, I mean, okay, I'll just do it anyway. So, uh, yeah, so I plan on doing the I Regret poem. Obviously, it's about a lot of regret. Uh, one of the structural devices that I chose was, um, I believe it's, oh, oh, never mind. Hey, guys. Yeah, whoa! Smash! Let's go! Yeah! All, All right, right, who's ready for some smash? <laughs> All right, so for our first match, we currently have Michael Ng versus Julian Serino. <laughs> well, why, Daniel, I haven't been this excited for a match since West Chesterfield went 10 rounds with Orville Tompkins in 1907. Oh, man. And our competitors take the stand. So, just as a bit of background information, map selection is first done by a round of rock, paper, scissors. Whoever wins gets to choose the map. Looks like they're planning to go with Yoshi's story. And whoever loses this match gets to pick the next match. If, if you need to uh, set your controls, you can do that, by the way. All right. So it looks like Michael Ng is TJ, and Julian is King K. Rule. Michael oh. playing Mario. Oh, it's Mario versus King K. Rule. Mario's certainly used to tackling large reptile monarchs, so King K. Rule should maybe be easy pickings. We'll have to see. Man, I'm pretty surprised it's not Bowser, you know? Mario has a pretty long grudge with that guy. What is it, 40, 30 years or something? It's been a while. In fact, you know that originally Mario's name was Jumpman, and during production, he was actually referred to as Osan, which means middle-aged guy in Japanese. Oh, wow. I believe the competitors are good to go. All right, the first match is about to start. Mario versus King K. Rule. Let's get ready to rumble. Oh. And it looks like Michael's tried to space using his fireball. Mario shooting those fireballs, and I have to say, that's a spicy meatball. Little bit of boomer humor for you, Daniel. Man, and looks like Mario's pulling out the wombo combos. Some real aerial juggling going on there for Mario. Oh, this portly plumber really does pack a powerful punch. Oh, man. And King K. Rules quickly approaching kill percent. 
It looks like TJ's trying to use the low ceiling on Yoshi's story to get a quick and easy really stop. Is, really is amazing that that little propeller can lift weight of that girl. Man, King K. Rule is a pretty heavy fighter. Oh! oh! And Michael takes the first stock! Mario is ripping through this opponent like you were a delicious plate of rigatoni. Oh, man. Those wombo combos. Oh! An incredible and recovery from Mario there. He recovers. And King K. Rule, does he get the stock? No! Mario DI! Things are heating up right now. Oh. King K. Rule's rule of the Kremlings, and with his spectacular ghost, it looks like he might have eaten half of his underlings. Looks like Mario's edgeguarding is pretty well. And he gets the parry! Looking to use that low ceiling stage once again. I think the fact that King K. Rule is so willing to throw his own crown as a projectile is compelling evidence that it's not really gold. But that's just a theory. A game theory. And Michael takes another stock. He's in a pretty good lead. Looks like they're playing up close. Michael getting some damage off of Mario. Or, sorry. K. Rule getting damage on Mario. Once again, the, the combos really are messing up King K. Rule. He gets the parry. Rather exciting. It's getting close. Things are getting so fast and so furious, Vin Diesel might have to hit us with a DMCA takedown. <laughs> Pretty good one. Oh, and he gets the back air. And he goes for the spike! Oh! And Michael can't recover! That was the sauciest play I've ever seen in my life. Oh, and Michael responds! Michael A taking the first round of the match! Smash that dislike button because someone just got ratioed right off the board! Oh man. Looks like Michael's putting on his lucky cap. You know, he sure does look like Mario with his uh, nice little baseball hat. All right. Look like both competitors are not changing fighters and play plan to play the same characters. We're going back into this same match. Oh! And looks like Mario's sporting that red, white, and blue. Not the Russian one, but the good old US of A. I have to say, although some people say red is sus, I think it really works on Lil Mario there. Oh, and Michael getting the combos. Julian's able to respond with the heavy hits from K. Rule, but Mario's ability to just combo and combo is just something to watch out for. Oh, King K. Rule with an incredible recovery. Throwing that worthless crown like it is no tomorrow. And it looks like Julian's looking to get some down airs. Almost as Sticky position due to Mario's sunshine abilities. More of those spicy meatballs coming right from Mario. Man, More I wish roll. I was Italian. Mario would have been a really cool guy to be friends with as Italian. And Mario gets the first stock. And another hit directly into the sky. K. Rule still has a chance to even things out. Do you know, Daniel, that King K. Rule was one of the first characters that actually got up after you beat him after the credits in his original game, Donkey Kong Country? Really? That's pretty cool. 
That's that's Good just old. like Dark Souls. And oh my god! Michael SD's off stage! Yes, you already put the controller down and then he got back up and just pounded you. It was a terrible time. Nah, did you play? Indeed. I see. And Mario's just oh! dominating this match. K. Rule gets the counter. Things are heating up. Both characters are currently very close. And Mario takes down K. Rule. K. Rule's down onto his last stock. Things are not looking too bright for Julian. Uh, but he can I feel he's still got some energy in him. He's Ju putting up a good fight. Julian can still definitely turn things around. And once again, uh, Michael with the wombo combos. And Julian with the clap. Mario really is just juggling that game. Oh! And it looks like our third place winner is Michael Ng with Mario. He gets to take home the $25 Amazon gift card. Really bringing that spice. But that is not to say that Julian did not put up a tremendously great fight. So, for our first place match, we have, let's see, I actually need to look at, we have Lucas Monroe versus Nick Minotti. Nick pulling off an early upset in the round by barely beating Justin Michael Pohl in a super tense and close match. Well, that was rather exciting, I have to say. Put a jacket on me and call me Drip Goku because that match was supreme. <laughs> Looks like we have our rock, paper, scissors match going on. Who will win? And looks like Nick gets to choose the stage. Going with Battlefield. Uh, a good, safe choice. Now, you know, Mr. Run, did you know that Sans is actually Ness? And Ness is actually Sans? I didn't know your name was Matt Pat, Daniel. Man, that's a bit of game theory for you. Ness looking rather sharp in that uh, yellow striped shirt there. Oh, and zero suit Samus. So here we have ZSS versus Ness. A stylish choice zero suit Samus is, especially in those wedge heels which have been proven Sorry. to be the worst shoe for combat scenarios, but she wears them all the same. And it looks like Nick is already comboing Ness. Oh, this oh. is getting rather exciting here. Ness using the Nairs and PK fires. Oh, but it looks like Samus doesn't need no Vario suit to take this heat. Man, you know, I wonder, what is Ness's batting average? I'm not sure, but I'm sure he is the MVP of this match. Oh, some nice juggling going on there. Samus isn't even touching the ground. Both competitors are approaching kill range. You know, for a character who's known for wearing large suits of Chozo powered armor, it really does take Bravery to show up to a And Lucas attack. takes the first stock from Nick Minotti. Things are heating up. Well. Oh! oh. It looks like Ness is earthbound no longer. <laughs> you know, take a kid, give him a baseball bat and incredible psychic powers. And you got a great premise for a Stephen King story. Or a JRPG protagonist. Either or. Man. I wonder if Ness has finally found his mother, you know? Well, certainly uh, Samus has been known to fight Mother Brain, so 
There's got to be a connection there somehow. <laughs> Man. And it looks oh. like Lucas is unable to hit his nares on Nick after a, oh. bit, a readjustment. Those spicy kicks really do pack a punch. Ness might never find oh. his way home, and he is down! Ness is down. I'm back for the next match. And it looks like Samus is really doing a number on Ness. You know, for a character with a giant glowing target on her back, she's doing really well. Yeah. yeah. And looks like Nick gets the parry and is oh. comboing Lucas off the stage, going off for some saucy plays. And Lucas just barely manages to recover. You know, when I played that first Metroid a long time ago, and I found out that the bounty hunter wearing the cool suit of armor was actually a girl in a swimsuit. I must say I was confused. And but Lucas progress, perhaps progress. gets the stock. You know, there's there's a chance to win this match. You know, even though he's already at kill percent, if he plays things right, you know, he can take this. It's close. There's still a chance. Life is still in it. Those Samus is wielding those Electro Whips rather meanly. And it looks like Nick has adjusted to Lucas's snares. It appears not oh. getting chain combo. And Nick takes the first and round after reading Lucas's recovery. Put everything you've got into crypto because we just rode that match to the moon, Daniel. <laughs> Man. Mr. Brun, I must ask, do you actually hold any cryptocurrency? Any NFTs? Dogecoin all the way, Daniel. <laughs> uh. And it looks like both competitors are going with the same characters once again. You know, newsflash for their audience, this match is actually a best three out of five. I feel like baseball bat versus electro whip really isn't a fair fight, but hey, they didn't ask me. And looks like... Truly is an aerial dogfight here. Both competitors using their aerials quite a bit. We have some real spicy fight going on here. And it looks like, you know, both competitors are kind of staying their distance away from each other. We see a lot of more shielding and dashing and rolls going on here. Lucas is recovered. And he gets the down it. Incredible skill on display here. Oh. And looks like Still. Nick's approaching kill range with Lucas. Still anyone's fight. And Lucas gets the first stock of Nick. Let's see if Nick can respond. It could be a turnaround here. Lucas getting the nares. Oh! And a recovery. Edge guard game is on point for Lucas here. Oh. 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 And it looks like there's an accidental pause. I mean, you know, I'm not too sure if that's legal, but um, we'll have to consult with the ref, Jack. I think they call it styling. <laughs> Man. Definitely keeping their distance. Nick looking to get some more damage on Ness. Ness giving Samus a run for our money, but we really don't know where this is heading. You know, it's pretty surprising seeing a kid last this long against the Bounty Hunter. 
At least Ness has style on his side. Man, With that you... backward baseball cap, we know he's the cool kid in class. I mean, he's a bit of a Charlie Brown, if I do say so myself. You know, with that striped shirt. Particularly in that color scheme. You know, to the crowd, please feel free to chant as loud as you want. And both players are at kill percent. It's a tight match. And looks like and Nick gets the up airs. Right into the camera. You know, Couldn't get more dangerous than this. And things are even once again. Man, this has got to be one of the closest matches I've seen in this tournament. Things are looking rather up. Oh. And Nick doing some, you know, questionable but yeah, fancy we'll offstage move. Really Ed guarding here. And it looks like Nick. Oh. Nick takes the second round. Oh man, that was a close one. The second round was taken. They say that blondes have more fun and Daniel, I think that's evidence right there. You know. So, you know, we're getting on to the third round here and looks like Luke is going with Final Destination once again. And I mean, Man, Lucas still has a chance here. That last round was really close. And it's just a testament to Nick's skill that he was able to kill at such an early percent with his combos. It's just a shame they don't want to make things spicy by choosing that stupid Pac-Man level. <laughs> Man. Three, two, two, one, go! And it looks like we're back to our third and could be our final round. And looks like Nick is really doing a number on Lucas. We looks like uh, Ness is trading up to a more defensive game here. Oh. Really hitting those blocks. Really guarding off of ledge, you know. Well, some people will say that Real warriors don't need the block button. That's true. You know, shielding is for losers, and that's why I don't shield. Oh, actually, yeah. Actually, though, I think that shielding is for winners because that's the thing I don't do, and I always lose in this game. Yeah, that might explain why I got out in the first round of the tournament. They say a good offense is a good defense, but it's looking like no defense is going to help Ness right now. He's and Nick again. gets the offstage edge card. Man, it's almost like we don't need this stage. They're playing so much off the side of it. <laughs> Once again, using the uh -oh. nares to his advantages. Ness playing a very, very careful game. This still could be anybody. And it looks like oh. Ness is doing a pretty good job of edge guarding, you know? And, and he kills Samus, evening things out with a nice little uh, cheek fair, taunt there. Fair and square, Ness just playing the role of those space pirates. And teaching Samus a lesson. Ness going for the grab, I think. Somehow he didn't get it. You know, we see a lot of uh, Nick punishing you know, Lucas and Luke. But he still is unable to counter the Nairs by Nick. Ness. But looks like he's able to. We have Samus play a careful game, keeping a little bit more distance. And Lucas is still alive after DI. Still, and couldn't manage the recovery. This is out, but not down for good. Man. We still have more match.
Oh, things are getting very tight. And it looks like Nick's getting off to his combos. He's off the stage now and is able to recover. Once again, Lucas's edge guard skills are pretty good. Going for Samus. the Nairs once again. He gets the back air. Samus just crisscrossing that stage back and forth. Making a very difficult target to hit with that PK fire. Man, I'm... This, things are getting tense. And Samus off the stage. All the Ness is down. It may yet be anyone's game. Lucas is in a per perilous state here, you know. And it looks oh. like, oh, oh, Lucas is still alive. And he recovers. Still on the stage. Go not for long. And it looks like Nick wins the first place prize of a grand Xbox X. Well done, sir. Well done, indeed. Let's get a cheer for our boys. Yeah. Cheers for the winner. Wonderful job. Absolutely a superb game between the two. A rather Man. impressive. They were true warriors in every regard. Yeah. And it looks like, looks like we're getting our prize. Man, that was, that was quite the tournament. You know, from the senior side of things, you know, I saw a lot of great matches, you know. Man. I have to catch my breath after that one, I have to say. Because we really did feel the adrenaline pumping. Yeah. And just a shout out to everybody who competed in this tournament. Thank you so much for not only donating, but also playing this wonderful game with us. Let's give a round of applause for everybody. Yeah! Woo! Great job, everyone. Yeah. No. Still waiting for uh, that grand prize, but man, I wonder if we can get an uh, exhibition match between Justin Michael Paul and Nick Minotti. It sounds like a fight for the. Hold on. Currently sorting out things right now. Please stay seated for a little bit. You know, it'll just be a short while. Everybody, say goodbye to uh, Miss Grant's class. Currently sorting things out with the organizers. You know, I see uh, three guys who snuck into this tournament sitting right in that row. You know, if we could, could we please get security here and kick them out? So, it looks like we have an exhibition match to keep things going. We're gonna have Justin Michael Ball versus Michael Ng! Oh! Justin Michael Paul, one of the well-known smashers in this school. You know, this is what I call excitement right here. Two combatants fighting just for the love of the game. Absolutely. Man. 
I can't wait to see what Michael or uh, Justin Michael Paul pulls out. Wait, wait, wait. One second, please. Could we get a cheer of support for Michael Ng on this side? Three, two, one. All right, and now can we get a cheer of support for Justin Michael Paul? All right, and looks like, I don't know who won, but they're choosing Pokemon Stage 2. Oh. I wonder how the type matchup is going to be in this round. I feel like this could be anybody's game. And it looks like we have Justin Michael Paul going as Corin. You know, I really do love uh, anime. I, yeah, all the Star Fighters look like anime characters. I'm sorry. And Justin pulling out the combos, you know. Oh, uh, so rather quick and amazing. The vicious game going on here. So, just to reiterate, this is an exhibition match, and it's all for fun. No prizes are, prizes are to be won here. But still, please enjoy. Looks like a rather vicious form of fun, if you ask me, though. They really are going at it as if their lives depended on it. And Mario definitely within, within range. We have Corin getting the hit. And Mario smashed right off the stage. He is trying. He's working at it. And we have Mario still being put on the defense. Thorne really dominating this match. Mario not even able to... Again. Mario's really going to have to pull out a rather amazing uh, set of moves in order to make this match and It happen. looks like Michael's on his last stock. You know, really, those anime sword fighters are doing the numbers. Oh, an excellent recovery there from Korn. And it looks like... Michael finally gets the stock. You know, things are 1 1, but Michael's at 69%. <laughs> 69. Oh, some amazing aerial juggling from. And it looks like they're both at even percent now. Things can go either way at this point. That flood really coming in handy for Mario. Originally appeared in Super Mario Sunshine, everyone's least favorite 3D Mario game. Man. And it looks like Michael Red. Oh! oh! And Michael hits one of the sauciest. Redirect! An oh man! An what a ledge guard! And a good one! That portly Italian plumber is really heating up things. Oh man. Let's give it up for both of our competitors, Michael Ng and Justin Michael Paul. Oh, let's go! A wonderful exhibition match showing incredible 
fighting prowess. And it looks like the organizers of the tournament are challenging Nick Minotti in an exhibition match for fun. Looks like they're going for Pokemon Stage 2 once again. You know. And here we have Bashar versus Nick Minotti. Uh, it looks like and we've got. And looks Hero like Bashar is going as game. Goku. And Nick Minotti's going as Captain Falcon. Oh man, I can't wait to see some saucy moves from both of them. You know what makes you a protagonist? Spiky hair makes you a protagonist. Three, Absolutely. Two, one, go. Looks like I they're do hope we see a good Falcon punch or two from this exchange. Hopefully Bashar can use Hero's gambling nature to, you know, get some hits. Oh, and it looks like he does. Captain Falcon not really having speed on his side without his race car. Man. You know, speaking of spiky-haired protagonists, do you watch anime, Mr. Brun? Indeed I do, Daniel. What's your favorite anime? You know, you ever, ever... I think I'd have to vote for One Punch Man, just because he doesn't have spiky hair. And I feel like that makes him the underdog. And Bashar gets the kaboom, taking the stock off from Nick. Captain Vulcan there really making that fuchsia helmet work for him. He Nick is looking silent. To, Nick looking to get one of the, uh, you know, Captain Falcon's power move, and he gets the up tilt. Hero holding his own against the relentless attack of Captain Falcon. And it looks like Nick going for some saucy moves off stage. Almost barely SDs, but is able to recover. You know, Captain Falcon's entry of F Zero on GameCube was renowned for being incredibly unsuccessful due to the fact that it was simply impossible. Yeah, I've, I've heard countless stories. And it looks like Bashar tried to put Captain Falcon to sleep, or uh, to snooze, but was unable to. Oh, really hoping we can see some saucy moves here. Falcon's off the and Bashar has Doom making a super and powerful an aspect. Impressive recovery from Captain Falcon. Man. man, are you sure this is Hero and not Sonic? Because Bashar's zooming. And it looks like, oh, just barely Nick is able to recover from that icy prison. Somebody must have given Hero some chili dogs because he really does have that blue hedgehog power. Man, Hero really bringing out its scampy aspects, you know, just getting uh, pretty good moves from his uh, downbeat. I feel like it's the cape that really makes the difference there. The cape? Yeah, I'd say so too. Very impressive whatsoever. Yeah, you know, I think he just looked like Goku. Both? Well, it looks like this Goku is going Super Saiyan because he really is putting up quite a fight in this match. Heroes off stage is able to recover. Impressive work from Grip Goku there. And Bashar is able to recover and punish. Really heating up now. This is the this is one of the final stocks.
and Nick finally is able to take Bashar's stocks. Captain Falcon taking on that role of Frieza. Just oh. keeping the game going. You know, Nick is in a really dangerous state here being at such a high percent. And it looks like Bashar and takes the exhibition he match. Has gone. Man. And Goku wins. I love Naruto. So, now, we should have our grand prizes here, and, you know, congratulations to the winners of this tournament. Nick Minotti, Michael Eng, and Julian Monroe. We, we are now going to do the prizes. And it looks like we have some uh, spectators who snuck in right in front of me. Get out. Whoa. Yeah, that's right. The door's right there. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. No, nah, I don't care. Yeah, that's right. I'm a hater. I got nothing better to do with my life except for hate. Huh? What do you want to say? Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it to my face. Say it to my face. Come on. Nah, I'm not letting you. All right, time for the prizes. So we're going to start from the bottom up. So we're going to start off with, uh, well, should we? Let's start off with Chris. OK. So let's start off with Julian. <laughs> let's go. Everybody, cheer, woo! Congratulations, Julian. You beat 92 other people. Next up, we have Michael and G. Round of applause for Michael. Next up, we have Lucas. There you go. And last but not least, Nick Minotti.
the 2021-2022 Westmount Smash Champion. And over here we have our lovely commentator, Daniel. All right, so just for some questions, Michael, Michael Ng, uh, how, did you, how did you feel after, you know, going through such a gauntlet of tough Smash opponents? Good. <laughs> That's pretty sick, man. Julian Serino, how do you feel after, you know, winning $25 and stuff? I'm just here so I don't go find. And it looks like he's already leaving. All right. <laughs> and Lucas Monroe. Man, you put up such a great fight with that Ness. You know, such a close match. Good job, man. How do you feel? Uh, great. <laughs> Anything you want to say? Uh, no, not really. All right. And we have our grand champion here, Mr. Nick Minotti, <laughs> winning such a grand prize of an Xbox Series X. Yeah, baby! Let's go! I love Moist Critical. Mr. Minotti, how do you feel after... Oh, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta come here. How do you feel after being crowned, you know, one of the best, or not one of, but the best Smash Bros. player in all of Westmount High? I guess I have an Xbox now. That's pretty sick, man. All right. Give it up for our winners once again. Okay, that concludes the event. Thank you everyone for coming here in person. Thank you everyone for watching. And thank you everyone for donating. Thank you. Yeah, whoa. Perhaps, maybe. There will also be, Cody will be set up if you want more information about uh, High Lifeline for volunteering or pamphlets.